This model is crocodile because it is not particularly beautiful. Uh, the outer shape, particularly from the front, does look a bit like a crocodile lying in the water. This car has got um, big fluffy wheels, independent suspension system, so uh, each individual wheel can actually be pushed up and down. Um, it has got a battery pack which can be easily accessed to change the batteries. It has got lights and if you turn around you see that it has got two L motors, a servo motor for the steering. I will now take this model a little bit apart to give you a better view on the inside of this model. This frame is very unique in the sense that it has a, a very narrow wheel distance, which means that it doesn't need much clearance. Um, and I try to build it as compact as possible. Um, and you can see it best from looking from the side. You do actually have the two motors here got the servo motor here and the battery pack right over there. So it is very compact design. As a matter of fact, you have three main components, which is one wheel assembly, another wheel assembly, and then only one 15 pin bar in the middle, which connects these two. And this makes this whole connection very, very rigid and very stable, because there's barely any joints it is just a joint here, a joint here, and that's all there is. Something else to notice is that um, I had to brace the I had to brace the um, the the steering system because this is a, a four-wheel steering system as well, and the problem is when when you drive this and you steer at the same time, um, this whole thing is very fragile. So I put in brackets over here and uh, over here as well and secured them so that nothing can really come off. It is also always difficult on where to attach the suspension. Um, so in my view, um, this is actually the best point because other people put it over here or over here and this can interfere with the rotation of the axis in the middle. As a matter of fact, you see a little bush here. Um, you see a bush here in the middle and that is made so that the axle cannot jump out because quite honestly this whole assembly here is not made to transmit a lot of torque so when you go up with your four-wheel drive on a very rough terrain it can happen that this whole thing falls apart so you have to do everything you can to prevent that from happening so putting an extra bush here in the middle bracing everything as much as you can is really really important now i selected here the very soft uh, springs I tried out other ones, the yellow hard ones for example, and yes, when you push them down, you know, it actually gives, you know, a nice, nice, much nicer little bump, but the problem is for driving, the, 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 the weight of the vehicle is actually quite low and um, um, for, for the wheels to actually get pushed in, um, you need to have the soft springs, because uh, otherwise if you draw, go over, if you go over a, a rock or a piece of wood, um, it will just, you know, the whole thing would just move up and not just the individual wheel. So, very soft uh, suspension system is necessary for these Lego cars. Another important feature is that the battery pack is very much put to the front. And that is, of course, when you go up 
on obstacles, uh, you want to have the weight actually still very much to the front, because otherwise, if, if it would be on the back, this whole thing would just toggle over. So if you now turn this around and if you would go up this way, uh, what you would see is that the center of gravity would be shifted even further to the back and this whole thing just flips over, which is very undesirable. So batteries in front uh, is quite important. A lot of Lego models, what they do is for style reasons, they actually put the batteries in the back because it's much easier to hide and you can put some nice fake motor in the front. But from a driving perspective, this is absolutely wrong. You do actually need to have the battery pack, which is the heaviest part of the whole model, very much in the front. Let's have a little bit of a demo of how this works. So you have got the uh, four-wheel drive. Important to see is that there is no differential. Differentials are not good for off-roads because um, if you know uh, a wheel comes off the road, it will just spin freely. So you cannot have a differential in an off-road car. Um, that has the disadvantage that if you drive in curves, um, uh, it's not a smooth uh, drive because both wheels drive at the same speed, but of course the, the inner radius is different from the outer radius. Um, um, now you get some slip, which is kind of ugly. Um, but if you're in a terrain and you want to get over uh, muddy ground and stones and rocks and what have you, it is important that you, you never actually have a wheel that spins freely. So therefore, a differential is not a good idea. So we have four-wheel drive and four-wheel steering. Here you can see that there is only one change of direction in terms of axles. So you got the motor, which got an axles, axis. The motor has got an axis like this, and the wheels have got an axis like this. So you do actually need to change at some point. And very often this is done with differential. But as we know, differentials are no good for off-road cars and therefore uh, you need to actually change the direction anyway. Plus, you normally also need to gear down so that you receive more torque at the cost of speed because these motors are quite fast in terms of uh, rotation um, but they lack a little bit of torque. So by uh, coming from a very small tooth wheel to a very large tooth wheel, you increase the torque dramatically, you slow down, which is also better for control, um, and you change direction. It's all done in one block and that is very efficient because with every tooth wheel that you add, you lose efficiency. To demonstrate uh, the effectiveness of this suspension system, I have here a little bit of, a, of an obstacle and when you see that I put the vehicle on top of it, you see that this comes up and all four wheels are still on the ground. And the same thing holds true also for the back. Now you could actually consider putting a little bit harder springs in here because you got more weight in the back of the car because of the battery. But this, I tried it out and with the harder springs it still um, is too hard. So if I now place this one in here, what you see of course that um, the uh, uh, suspension system can also take care of the, uh, of the displacement uh, in front. So let's make a bit of a test. I can do this. And of course I can also drop this whole thing in slow motion for you. Another design goal with this car was uh, to have it fast. Uh, all the crawlers are, are very powerful but also very, very slow. Now this car is quite fast, not as fast as race 2, but uh, it is still reasonably fast um, and you can get, uh, can get up most obstacles. The center of gravity is very low because all heavy components are very low. You've got two motors, the servo motor and the battery just on top of each other. It cannot be any lower. I think that this chassis, this frame, is actually even more interesting than the, uh, than the design of the cover. Um, that's why I called it the crocodile because it's not very beautiful. But this inner frame, I think, is very uh, beautifully designed. It is very simple and robust small and compact. Um, it has a short wheel distance. It's only one 15 bar that connects the two uh, steering driving units. It makes it very robust, 
very lightweight, so there's no very little movement here in the frame itself.